Hi, welcome back. It's Lionel, tech lead and partner at West Vault. And Christmas has come early to us in PHP world. PHP 8 just dropped last week. And I just had the chance to go through all the codes and the PHP documentation. And these are my five killer features that you want to check out in PHP 8. Now, just to, before we begin, a little bit of backstory of PHP. Usually, we launch a brand new PHP version every three to five years, but you may remember in PHP 6 was completely skipped. It has been almost 10 years since uh, 6 to 7. It's amazing that we've only taken three years to go PHP uh, 7 to PHP 8. On the other hand, Backend languages usually don't update as quickly as a front-end language. Some of them, especially the competition over here, uh, have like this massive chain franchise where they roll out a new version every three months. Usually in PHP, you want to be looking out for very importantly, does it break my existing legacy code? Because if it breaks that, all the existing code is just wasted. I'm glad to announce PHP 8 doesn't do that. I've studied it, I've run it. Uh, it's still very stable. You can still run your old applications on it and take advantage of some of the new features coming right out. So let's jump into it. The number five reason I like in the new PHP 8 is the now safe operator. Now safe operator deals with objects and running functions on those objects. So if you have a getter uh, function before, right, and it returns a now, say you're looking for a row, if you run a function on that, it will throw an error because there's no object there. You used to have to be able to write an if statement to check if it's set and then run that function. So now all you have to do is add a question mark in front of your arrow function if it's not found, it will just return now. It will not throw that error. So pretty nice, gonna save you a little bit of code, a little bit on the syntax. Number four, match by expression. Now, usually when you do a match, uh, you run the switch function. So you switch a particular variable and then check it against this stuff. So it can get pretty long sometimes. Uh, it can be a little bit uh, complicated. So they have introduced this new function called the match function, which is basically matching between an array and returning a certain value from it. So it is nice syntax. I like the way it's written, um, pretty unique. Uh, you don't have to write the break function, which is pretty good because it kind of doesn't make any sense that, you know, switching, why not, you know, have two conditions. So this is pretty cool. The match function, that's number four. Number three, number three is going to be big, man. Named arguments in a function. So <clears throat> when you have a function and you've got a lot of null values or default values, say a lot of default values, six input variables and four uh, defaults. If you want to change the last one, right, you actually have to go and set everything, all six uh, variables, and that can make your code very, very complex. The other thing is that if you have a lot of input variables and they're all, you know, uh, integers or things that don't give you any information, you can get really confused. You know, I've seen code that's gone, uh, you know, eight input variables and used throughout the website. Now you don't even have to deal with this anymore. You can just define these uh, arguments. You can define, uh, define the variables and you don't have to put all the stuff that is set as a default. So it makes your code very clean. People know what exactly you're inputting. So if you had, say, a, a example, a box, height, length, uh, depth, you could just say new box, depth, 10, and that would just change that in that function. So it makes it very clean. Uh, I really like this feature. Number two, constructor properties in a class. Now, to me, this is very redundant. If you want to do a property in a class, you have to number one, define it, declare it on top. Number two, you have to put it in the constructor. And number two, you have to write a setter. This dash variable equals variable, right? Now, this is kind of obvious that if you're going to use this, if you're going to set in a constructor, you're probably going to use it right? Kind of obvious. If you go and write a shopping list and you go to shop to buy milk, you're probably going to drink the milk, right? 
what else would you be doing? So PHP 8 people have listened and now all you have to do is write it in the constructor and it will declare it, it will set it, and it will, you'll be able to use it as a class variable. So saving the code, I think it's pretty obvious that you're probably gonna use it. We'll probably have to get used to it a little bit, but otherwise, very nice piece of syntax. I think uh, I'll be using some of this. Definitely, this will be one of the most common uses of uh, PHP 8's new syntax. Now, PHP 7, the biggest one was a double question mark. So this is number two. And then now the honorable mentions before we get to number one. So the first honorable mention is trailing commas in functions. Now, no big deal, you know, you just remove it. But personally, very annoying, like when you're cutting lists and putting it together, you always have that last comma there. If you use JavaScript, it screams an error. Now you don't have this problem with PHP 8. You can just simply just leave it there. Very useful if you're doing cut and copying uh, list, you know, you change the last one, just leave the comma there. It's, I mean, it's not a big problem, just very nice on the syntax. So that's honorable mention one. And honorable mention two is the one that you probably wanted to know a lot about is the JIT, just in time processing. I mean, what does this mean for the speed of PHP? Now, the reason why it is number one, right, is that it's unclear whether JIT applies to web servers. Now, let me give you some back uh, story on this. JIT is basically just in time processing. The idea is somewhat similar, uh, if like a cache, you know, when you're caching stuff. The reason is that PHP is compiled uh, at runtime, right? So that's why you got this language, you don't have to wait for compiling to go on. The problem, right, is that when you're running a web server, it's not really about processing. It's more about in, out, what we call IO operations. Go fetch this, go fetch that, right? There's not really much processing going on. So we can't actually make full use of the just-in-time processing. So you won't see a huge amount of performance if you use uh, PHP 8 with your current web server. On the flip side, if you decide to use PHP for something like image processing, where you have a lot of loops and a lot of recursive um, activity, right? You're gonna see that performance improvement. And one example here is by one of the PHP core teams. I put the link below where he was doing factual calculations using PHP. Sweet, right? PHP to do factual calculations and you can see that huge performance as they're going in and recalculation. So think about map processing, think about zooming in, these kind of things. Why it's still on the honorable mention list is not to give up hope. This opens the door to a whole lot of new optimization strategies that we can really take a look at uh, moving down as from there. So the language has still ways to go getting even faster. Now, finally, back to the number one reason to use PHP 8. Can I get a drum roll? The number one reason to use PHP 8 is the brand spanking new logo. I love this logo. I think, you know, one thing that we really need to do in PHP is to work on our branding, right? And the new logo, I love this idea, the double helix with the 3D design, you know, the infinity symbol there. PHP is going places. Um, I love the font. I love the whole idea. You gotta look at the history. The one major point about PHP is because it's a people's language, we haven't really been spending a lot of time on our marketing and UI design, something that the React people, actually the Laravel people are very good at. The big thing about this is that, you know, think about our logo, right? The elephant, not really the best symbol of a language that's really fast. You know, I would probably like a PHP cheetah or PHP African swallow. Maybe that's a better idea. Um, but the new logo whew, looks so good. I'm so excited because I'm going to be using this logo on all my videos uh, presenting true. It really symbolizes that PHP is now a fast, modern, infinity language. So that's the number one reason. It's awesome. So now, what are you gonna do with PHP 8? I say, guys, go out, try out PHP 8 first, 8.0, just look at it. There's not much breaking mold stuff. You'll probably do it in less than an hour. 
Before you move on to the production stuff, wait for PHP 8.1 or a very late uh, revision, say 8.022 or something like that, because we're going to see huge amounts of improvements always with new features, especially once it gets to uh, a public release. There'll be new improvements, there'll be new things before you start uh, migrating over your existing sites. Like for us, we usually wait for the one version, uh, like seven before we wait for 7.1 because we've got more, more like a hundred sites running legacy code there. So you want to make sure it's stable. You want to make sure that there are benefits doing. But other than that, this is awesome in the PHP community. I look forward to seeing it rolling out on the sites. I look forward to us beating all the rest of the competition. And that's the bottom line because the tech lead said so.